I set up a little scene to kind of show you my exposure approach on the Red Komodo X and kind of talk about how and why I use ISO in certain circumstances and you know why it may be beneficial for you to kind of think about it this way but this is just kind of how I approach things and you know obviously everybody has a little bit different method of approaching exposure now for me obviously the first thing when I do when I point my camera seeing like this is I'm thinking okay this looks really good on my monitor first thing I do though is look at my traffic lights to make sure that I'm not clipping any highlights or crushing any shadows and in this, this example let's pretend like I looked and I was like hey this is the exposure this is how I want the image to look this looks great then I look over at my traffic lights and I say oh no that's clipped we got to fix that well to fix that I had a couple of options I could change my t-stop add nds change my shutter angle or nd the window and or add light more light into the scene with artificial lights uh, those are two were too time consuming for this example um, iris i wanted to keep that consistent and not change anything so i kept iris exactly the same and let's pretend we wanted to keep the depth of field the same so we didn't want to change our iris so really we had two other options nds or shutter angle and in this scenario i just used shutter angle because it was much quicker because I had a little bit of changing light and I didn't want to fuss with putting a map box on or anything like that. So I decided to opt for using shutter angle, but you can honestly use shutter angle as like for this example, instead of shutter angle, let's pretend I put on, you know, three stops of ND instead of change the shutter angle. So what I did when I looked at this image, I thought, okay, this looks good, but I'm obviously clipping some highlights I could tell by my monitor and even with false color everything was pointing at clipped highlights so to fix that what I had to do was bring the exposure down by three stops and the way to do that I didn't touch ISO because the ISO has no impact on your raw image sensor data so I opted for shutter angle so I went to a 45 degree shutter angle to compensate I went three stops above ISO 400 to go to ISO 3200. So now when we have 3200 ISO at a 45 degree shutter angle versus ISO 400 and 360 degree shutter angle, what you see there is basically a three stop adjustment either way. So a three stop adjustment with ISO going up and a three stop actual exposure change on the sensor going down to a 45 degree shutter angle. So the way I use ISO in this example, well, there are two benefits. And in, in, this, in this case, it's not even as evident with 3200 ISO, but 3200 ISO, number one, it gives me more highlight information because that dynamic range, that middle gray point is shifted to 3200 ISO. But I've also used ISO 3200, I've used ISO as kind of like a monitoring LUT, if you will, on my screen so that when I was looking at the image, it didn't look three stops darker, it looked normal and looked great. And that's awesome for sending out to a first AC to pull focus or sending out to a video village. You don't want the director's monitor, the client seeing something that looked three stops underexposed. You want to adjust that ISO uh, in camera and that's kind of what my approach was so bouncing between the two images they look pretty much identical with the exception of the highlights obviously and then obviously the shadows as well if we look at the shirt here on the left at ISO 400 it's completely blown out and we our highlights are clipped we've lost color information right here on, on these letters and and this little print right here on this leaf, we've completely lost information here. Same on this outside on the siding on this house out the window. You can see there's lost information detail there. And then this light is a B7C bulb. And you can see that it's completely blown out and clipped. And then this little reflection of the bulb is also clipped. Now, when we change the exposure to 3200 
ISO with a 45 degree shutter angle. Again, ISO isn't really an actual exposure adjustment. All this information is retained and we're looking good there. And then we also have the information brought back on the leaf right here. So we've got that going. And then on this back wall, all of, all the siding, all this information has been brought back. And then even on this B7C bulb, you can actually see the little cone, the little heat dissipation cone right here. And then on the reflection here, you can see all that information is brought back. So in a real world example, how, how would I use this approach? Well, if I'm like doing a daylight exterior or something and like I was just doing a project and one of the scenes was like we ended up shooting like 945 or 10 o'clock somewhere sometime that in the morning in September. So think of where the sun is during that time of the year. It was really harsh highlights, like really harsh highlights. And at 800 ISO at the T-stop I was, I wasn't overexposed anything. I wasn't clipping or anything, but I knew I wanted to have higher retention in those highlights and I wanted to boost my ISO just so I knew that I would have much more of a, a pleasing roll off from highlights and those highlights to the shadows. So what I did is I cranked it up to, I think it was 3,200 ISO, I believe. And then I added two stops of ND to kind of bring it back looking like how it would at 800 ISO. That way, when I brought it into post, I wasn't making ISO exposure adjustments and having to uh, worry about having to change that ISO down to shift that middle gray point for those highlights. What I did as I approached it in a way of getting it looking right in camera, so when I brought it on the timeline, really at that point, it was just a Rec. 709 transform in my color grade and not worrying so much about having to bring the ISO down because I exposed to the right, which a lot of people like to do on red cameras. That is one of the ways that I approach exposing on the Red Komodo X when in a particular using ISO to my advantage. Have everything looking good and control all that light, have everything looking good in camera so that when I bring it into post, I don't have to fuss with making major exposure adjustments maybe bump up the ISO a third of a stop here or bringing it down a third of a stop, but not dealing with two and three stop exposure adjustments. So that's kind of the approach I take. Um, I don't know if that was helpful or not, but that's kind of what I do. And um, I've been very happy with the images that I've gotten from the Komodo X and the Komodo by approaching it this way. So um, yeah, that's pretty much all I have for you on this one. Hope you found it helpful if you did. Uh, tell me in the comments or give me a thumbs up and subscribe. And um, that is what a brain fart looks like. Bye.